On July 4, 2023, the movie Sound of Freedom opened to a large audience. It does introduce the audience to what we might politely call human trafficking, which includes border crossing, domestic servitude, sex, organ harvesting, and satanic rituals. For those who have been impacted by Operation Underground Railroad, there is a serious celebration. The taste of freedom is fantastic, but perhaps the story is not that simple. Let's address some questions. Is this the best model to address the problem, or does this fuel the problem? Is the subtle hint of wag the dog coincidence or intent? It does not take much study, and many have written about the connection between authorities and the drug trade, legal and illegal. It is an example of controlled opposition. If a powerful group was in the drug business, having presence in both product, delivery, and regulation can put them in a dominant position. There is often the noted revolving door between regulators and big pharma. For the illegal market, different techniques are used, but in both cases, the industry and regulators flourish. Just like in drugs, if you're involved in human trafficking, you would want to participate in delivery and regulation. Consider this through the eyes of the perpetrators. Like any other business, if you are a part of a major player, you want to expand your market, dominate or eliminate the competition. Government or private agencies that appear to work against you can be of serious benefit to you. At minimum, you would want only a limited number of organizations to deal with and then monitor their activities. You could keep ahead of them by knowing what they are doing and occasionally allow some victories to the organization, such as impacting a thousand of your two million market. It is simply the marketing cost of doing business. Perhaps you can garner greater insight or influence by placing or compromising one or more people in the organization. With influence, you can then use the organization as a weapon against your competition. The ultimate case is that you control the organization and perhaps even be the party that sets it up. The persona is they are your enemy. The reality is they are your tool. In all cases, you would do what you could to support the organization, as they are indeed your ally, even unwittingly. But it is more than just controlling the market and stifling your competition. They become advertising for your product. They inform those that might be unaware that you have a product or service to offer. You raise interest and give clues how your product can be found. You would find it difficult to advertise on a highway billboard or in a magazine. But when the evening news, social media, or a movie highlights what you do, the message is out. Most assuredly, the vast majority of those employed by or supportive of Operation Underground Railroad have a serious concern for those impacted by human trafficking. Even if it is 100%, it is rational to consider their effectiveness. While taking joy in those impacted, are there other considerations? The numbers published by Operation Underground Railroad show they have roughly $60 million in assets, with Fidelity Investments holding $43 million. They spend about $30 million in 2022, with almost $3 million paid to just eight people, plus over a million in video production services. Salaries, other compensation, and benefits doubled from the previous year, while income dropped by a third. Over $9 million is granted to domestic and foreign organizations. They claim to have an impact on just over 1,000 kids in 2022, so about $30,000 per child. Again, we must celebrate the joy for the impacted, but are they simply akin to the high-profile drug bus that makes the news, while the industry continues to flourish? It feels good for the moment, but does the problem continue to grow. In 1997, the satirical movie Wag the Dog was released, showing how to manipulate the public for a political goal. It was an insightful way to show how to fool the masses and motivate them for a goal. A character, William Schumann, was given the nickname Old Shoe. To motivate the public to stand with Schumann, the producers tied some shoes together with their laces and flung them into trees and over power lines. This was shown on the news and spurred the public to do the same around the nation. 
In the trailer for Sound of Freedom, there's a moment where you can see a pair of shoes hanging from a power line. This could simply be coincidence, or, as is often done, it could be a subtle reference to those in the know. It was only present for about a second and added nothing to the trailer. So why was it there? If the shoes are coincidence or intent, it is secondary compared to the results. Will the movie build awareness to expand or shrink the market? Will it build more prominent organizations that work against or are allies of the industry? At $30,000 each, is that best spent in marketing to rescue a child or feeding a family? Why are people trafficked? Simply because there are customers. Many of those customers have the financial resources and political prowess to pay for those services. If one child is rescued, the customer simply moves on to the next. Move the focus to the customer. Money is typically not an issue for the customer, but exposure might be. There might be a serious cost for a prominent business or political figure if they are exposed with evidence. What authorities would do is often of little risk, especially when they're also compromised. This is true in the world stage and in the local community. There is the drama of an organization helping others, and there is the idea of putting into the hands of others the tools to help themselves. This is the purpose of the Shofar Leaks model. It is an ecosystem, not an organization. There are no half-million-dollar salaries, as there are no employees. There is no central place to compromise, but a leveling of the playing field between the powerful and the powerless. It is an ecosystem that, if brought to life, is self-sustaining and not a donation model. It needs a small number of people to bring it to life. Who are they? In January of 2023, I released a video, Modern Day Slavery, From Cocoa to Sex, Offering a Fighting Chance for Some. This is an appeal for allies who will bring chauffeur leaks to life. There'll be no movies. There'll be no accolades. There will not be a $30,000 cost to impact somebody, but perhaps $100. Please consider the close of the Modern Day Slavery video. My name is John Kozlowski. My email is john at kozlowski.org. I'm politically incorrect. I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not give up until I'm stopped contact me. This may only help a few, or maybe only one. What if that is your own daughter?